took time for Abraham to get prepared. So Abraham, he had to consecrate. He had to make sure that he was ready to completely sell out to what God had told him to do. Number two is separation. After the consecration comes the separation. And that's the next big challenge that God has for those that believe him is that he's going to call you apart. If you're going to really serve him, God say, you're going to have to be willing to cut loose from some of them friends. You're going to have to be willing to cut loose from some of those acquaintances, some of those things that you used to do. You're going to have to be willing to make a separation. I say, why? Because you can't serve two masters. Either you're going to serve one and hate the other, or you're going to hate one and serve the other. But you can't have it both ways. So in the separation, we have to uh, be willing to pull away from things or people that is going to jeopardize our consecration. See, once I've dedicated myself to God wholly, to his plan, to his way, now I've got to be willing to separate, pull away from anything that's going to jeopardize my sanctification, my dedication to what I've consecrated myself to. Number three, cultivating your conviction is information. First, I have to consecrate. I have to then separate. And then now I have to have the information. The information is a download of truth. From God's word. Other words, I got to make sure that I got it just like God said. Huh? I, I, I can't, I can't, Mr. Yerby, go by what my friends said, see. Because, see, them old friends, they'll get you screwed up. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, oh, man, you know, God, <laughs> he, he ain't mean for you to just do it all like that. Now, you... You just you being a little overboard with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah them old friends that get you so mixed up and messed up. That's the reason why you have to have that separation in there. Yeah. Because when the download comes, yeah. you cannot have two and three streams of information coming in. Yeah. You got to have only one, and that is the word of God. What is it that God is saying concerning my life? Consecration. Separation. Information. Well, why? Because God said his word mm -hmm, is a lamp unto my, my feet and a light unto my pathway. So if I'm going to make this journey, if I'm going to walk this walk, if I'm going to get to the promised land, whatever it is that God has promised me, I got to have the word. The word is the only thing that's going to help me and make sure that I don't slip off. The word of God is a lamp. It'll make me see them pitfalls. The word of God is a light. It'll show me the more two-faced friends. Huh? The word of God will reveal to me what God's full plan is for my life. Consecration. Separation. Now I got the plan, the information. Now is saturation. 
Now that I have the information, saturation is becoming fully involved with the plan that God has for my life. In other words, I'm not just going to be a Sunday go to meeting Christian. But I'm going to be like David said. He said, in God's word do I meditate both what? Day and night. See, it, 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 it's, it's, it's easy because there's a plan to reach what our destination is. But the truth of the matter is, is 90% of us are not going to be willing to do what it takes. Huh? When you talk about going line by line, step by step, to get to where it is that you want to get to in God, or to access those blessings, access the prosperity, access that unmerited favor. 90% of us don't want to make the sacrifice. Consecration, separation, information, then saturation. I'm convicted to the point that I'm constantly in God's word. Day and night, I'm taking out time. Now, that don't mean that uh, uh, you become a hermit. No, but hey, uh, the time that I used to be spending gossiping to them old friends of mine, the more laughing hyenas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take that time now, that little extra 15 minutes. Let me get in my word. Let me spend that time in my word. Let me see what I can get from God. Before I go to bed, let me spend another 15, 20 minutes in my word. For, so day and night, I got my mind. I'm bringing it in. I'm saturating. Because I got a conviction on what it is that God has said that he's going to do in my life. And I can't let nothing and nobody take it from me. I got a bulldog holding. You can shake me and you can break, but I still hold on. After saturation, there is then deliberation. I'm now able to make a calculated decision based not on what man said, but on what God said about my life. Irregardless to the climate or the current situation or circumstances that I'm dealing with, I'm judging everything according to God's word which I have chosen to live by. Huh? So I have now been saturated so much in God's word until I have the ability to look at my circumstances. And though I see that I got the Red Sea in front of me. Woo! And, and, and though I see Pharaoh's army behind me, because of the conviction that I have within me, I can make a deliberate decision. That is, that no matter what comes and no matter how high the situation is, in front of me, some way and somehow, my God shall deliver. Yeah. And if you keep your Coming up on the ladder right. Yes. It's going to be trying sometimes. Yes, it's going to be tough sometimes. Yes, it's going to look like the unrighteous is prospering sometimes. But you got to have a conviction. 
down on the inside of your sanctified. Transformation creates production and production creates manifestation. We'd like to invite you to our Harvest Time Fellowship Conference. Services will begin at 7 p.m. nightly and 11 a.m. Sunday morning. For transportation and more information, please call 229-436-7707 or visit us online at www.efbm.org. We hope to see you there. My God is going to bring me out. I know what it looks like in my past. I know what it looks like in my future. But I know down on the inside, on the inside of my sanctified soul, because I've spent some time with the Lord, because I've separated myself from my friends, because I decided to follow Jesus. No matter who comes and no matter who goes, I decided to make Jesus my choice. I decided to look back over my life. And when I recognize, after looking things over, that Jesus is my deliverer, that Jesus uh, is my way out of no way, that Jesus uh, is my rock in a dreary place, uh, that Jesus uh, will deliver me from them all. So no matter what comes, uh, no matter what goes, uh, because I have a conviction, uh, because I made up in my mind uh, that though you slay me, uh, yet will I trust you. Uh, though you take away uh, all of my money, uh, though you take away uh, all of my houses, uh, all of my land, uh, I will, uh, yeah, uh, I will uh, trust in the Lord. Uh, Yes, I will believe God. I ain't going nowhere. I won't take nothing for my journey. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Deliverance. I made this decision. Tell somebody I made this decision on purpose. It wasn't a mistake. I didn't just wake up and decide to do this, but I made up my mind on purpose that I'm going to live for Jesus. I made up my mind that no matter who leaves or no matter who comes, I'm going to hold on and see what the end is going to be. You ought to say, yeah, I'm not turning around. I'm not taking down. I'm not going back. Ain't nothing back there but death, hell, and destruction. Say, yeah, I'm going to hold on and see what the end going to be. Come on and bless the Lord. Deliberation. I made up my mind on purpose. And so finally, I'm determined now. After I consecrated, I've separated, I've got the download of information. I've been saturated in the Word of God. And then I've made a deliberate decision to hold on. Now I've got a dogged determination. Now I've got a bulldog hold on what thus saith the Lord. So I don't care what mama said about it. I don't care what sister said about it. I don't care what the homeboy said about it. But I am determined 
I say I'm determined to hold on to God's unchanging hand. See, when we have determination, our determination causes our flesh to line up with the will of God. Good God Almighty, <laughs> my mind goes back <laughs> and I can remember my master. <laughs> I can remember King Jesus <laughs> in the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> and I can remember him <laughs> after he had gotten to the place <laughs> that he didn't feel like he could go any further. <laughs> the Bible declared that he began to pray <laughs> until blood poured out of his pores. <laughs> It was so much pressure uh, on Jesus, uh, so much pressure uh, on the man of God uh, to blood begin to pour uh, out of his pores. Uh, but good God Almighty, I can hear Jesus. Uh, hey, yeah, I can hear Jesus uh, because of his conviction. Uh, I can hear Jesus uh, begin to ask his daddy. Uh, Father, if it be, let this cup pass from me. In other words, I wish that I didn't have to do it. In my flesh, I'm torn up. In my mind, I don't want to go. But my conviction, whoo. Hey, 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 woo! But Jesus said, I have a conviction. I got this thing tied down on the inside of me. And that wild, my flesh, don't want to act right. Why my flesh? Don't want to suffer. Why my flesh don't want to take the beating? Why my flesh don't want to go through the pain? Down on the inside, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I don't know about you, but I have a nevertheless down on the inside. I have a nevertheless when my flesh is trying to lead me astray. I have a nevertheless when those friends are trying to distract me. I have a nevertheless when things are looking all crazy. When I don't have the finances. <laughs> to meet the money <laughs> that I have to pay my bills. I have a nevertheless, I won't take down. I won't go back. I won't do anything <laughs> to mess up what God <laughs> has promised me. Cause he promised uh, that if I hold on <laughs> and obey, <laughs> he said, I promise <laughs> if you're willing, <laughs> and obedient you'll eat the good of the lamb yes somebody hold on somebody don't give in but be willing be obedient and God promise I say God promise that you'll eat the good of the lamb God promise that if you keep your conviction, yes, it's going to be trying sometimes. Yes, it's going to be tough sometimes. Yes, it's going to look like the unrighteous is prospering sometimes. But you got to have a conviction down on the inside of your sanctified soul. That says, nevertheless, yeah, I see what they got over there, but nevertheless, 
Yeah, I know they laughing at me. <laughs> but nevertheless. Yeah, I know they picking at me. But nevertheless. Yeah, I ain't got the kind of car I want to drive right now. But nevertheless. All about Shadow and the DA Shadow. Yes. I got a conviction. I got a promise. I got a word from the Lord. And that's more to me than silver and gold. That's more to me than houses and land. That's more to me than what who comes and what who goes. Because I know who God is. See, I don't know what you all might do. I mean, I'm saying I thank God for you. But honestly, I just don't know. If a, if a bomb hit, everybody might leave. <laughs> I'm talking to one of my pastors. and They say, Chief, I had an issue at the church, and somebody went to cutting up and acting crazy. I ain't know what my deacons look like. I ain't have hardly nobody. I say, ah, well, let me go out here. And sometimes it happens like that. Yeah, you, you know that you have people that you have put in the position and you believe that they're going to do what they're supposed to, but you really, you just don't know. But what I'm saying is when it comes down to the master, when it comes down to the Lord, if it's nobody but you and Jesus, Woo! Hallelujah. I say if it's nobody but you and Jesus, that's enough. Better ask the prophet Elijah's armor bearer. Laying out, the man of God sent him to go and get him some water and get prepared to get the day started. And he had already heard that the enemy was coming. <laughs> he went to go and serve the man of God and tipped around and saw the whole army arrayed. Now, I don't know about you, but Elijah had to be a bad boy for a whole army to come after one man. And there his little armor barrel comes shaking, Master, Master. Master, the whole army is arrayed against us. Elijah said, man, I know you ain't come wake me up for that. He said, well, Master, they're going to kill us. Elijah said, Lord, open up his eyes. And with many of us, that's what we have to have. We have to have our spiritual eyes opened so we're able to discern that he that is with us is greater than he that's with them. Abraham's armor bearer eyes came open and he saw the host of the Most High. Flaming swords of fire. Hey, all about Sunday, the Most High. Hey, he that is with you is greater. Than whatever it is that you're facing. Is greater than whatever it is that you're coming up against. There's no amount of money that God can't supply. There's nothing. There's not a need that God cannot meet. Our God is greater 
I say, our God is greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's prayer time again, and I am now petitioning for those of you that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sin. Well, there's no greater time than the present. All you have to do is just accept in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, and he is ready and willing to come in. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will, let me in. I'll come in and I'll sup with him. In other words, Jesus is ready and he's willing to come in and to be a part of your life if you're willing to let him do so. Well, it's just as easy as repeating a few words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I ask you now to forgive me for all of my sins. I'm sorry for whatever is done, I've done in my life that's against your will and against your word. And I repent and I ask you now to forgive me. Come into my life, make me a new creature. Well, if you can believe what you just said, then it's already done. Now, what your responsibility is, is to join a Bible-based church that will teach you how to grow and to become the warrior and the winner that Christ is meant for you to be. God bless you. I invite you to come right here to the First Albany Deliverance Cathedral on 1506 South Slappy Boulevard in the Good Life City of Albany, Georgia, where we are discipling winners. We're training men and women how to become winners. So listen, we're glad to have you here if you would like to. We have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Church services each Sunday at 1030. And we'll be looking forward to see you here. God bless you now. Look to see you. We love you. Thank you for tuning into Latter Rain. We hope you have enjoyed the word this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please visit our online store at www.efvm.org or call 229-436-7707. To partner with us on our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please make a donation by clicking the Give link on our website or through the Givelify app. Once again, we thank you for tuning into Latter Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, the Latter Rain. Oh,